So I use Kittle all the time and Kittle's constantly updating their site and adding more and more features. In this video, I wanna share with you five new features that I found on Kittle recently and share them with you and show you how they work. Let's go. Hey everyone, it's Juno with Detour Shirts. In this video, I'm pretty excited to share with you five new features. I'm gonna share five features on Kittle that I haven't shared on my channel before. They're new to me. You may have seen them online or if you're watching Kittle videos, but I'm gonna show you where to find them and how to use them for print on demand. So without any further ado, let's just jump right into it. Let's go into Kittle right now and I'll show you where they are. So here we are on Kittle, Kittle.com, uh, still in beta, which is amazing because they're still adding more and more stuff. And you can see they keep adding more and more designs too. So they're constantly updating, which I really love about Kittle. They know exactly um, what kinds of things to add for our, us as graphic designers, as sellers, print on demand sellers, and so on. So the first one I wanna share with you is when you click on new project, check this out. So when you hit new project, um, you may have noticed this standard presets, right? This is the one we had currently, but they added this pod presets, which is really cool if we we're doing print on demand. If you're watching this channel, you probably do print on demand. They have the merch by Amazon preset, 4,500 by 5,400. So you don't have to do it in here. You can just click on that and go, right? Uh, they also have the printful ones, uh, this printful all over. They have the red bubble standard, which is a little bigger to so fit on more products. Um, they have the sticker sheet for Redbubble, Displate if you're doing um, posters, I talked about that in one of my videos. Uh, you can do posters, and Kittle's perfect for po posters, I said that in one of my videos before. T Public's on here as well, so they, they know all the print-on-demand sites that people use. Awkward Styles, Printify, like if you have any questions what size you need for print-on-demand, it's pretty much here, the, the big ones are anyway, um, you know, Printful, Printify, Merch by Amazon or Amazon Merch on Demand, Redbubble, T Public, Displate. Um, they could add more as well in the future if we, if they are, but I think all of these will cover even if you're selling on other print on demand sites like Society6 or Zazzle or Cafe Press. You could still use for t shirts, you could use this for um, other things, you could use this and this. So if you're selling mugs on Printify, they, I think they still would work on mugs on. Redbubble, for example, and things like that. So have fun with this. I think this is a really good uh, for us uh, as print on demand sellers to have this site. And I'm so glad that they added this. So feature number two happens when you get into it. So let's um, go in and do the t-shirt. Let's do, see how this works. Click on it, hit create. I got my 4500 by 5400 here really quick. I didn't have to um, type that in. So for photos and anything, uh, an element that's a graphic, uh, let me show you the difference. So I'll add a photo here, right there. You notice the photo, you cannot color it. So that, that's uh, the distinction. So if I go into elements and I type in, uh, let's do sunset. This will give you an idea. So this sunset you see is a kind of a graphic, more of a photo artwork, I don't know the right word, but you can't color it, right? So if you go like this one here, you can color the object. This is a SVG, this is like a PNG, or this is a vector, right? Um, which you can still scale. But what I'm trying to say is um, the feature that you can use is called cropping. And it only works for photos or graphics like this where you, uh, it is an image. I guess that's the word, image settings. This is object. So objects and image is what they call it on Kittle. Uh, you can see this is image. So any image you can crop. And the way the cropping works is you double click on it. So double click two times and you can pull this up. So if you wanna crop it like that, you can. If you need to crop it uh, even further, either way, like this, you can crop in and not have to use the full photo or the full image in this case. Uh, and why that's useful for something like this is, let's say you wanna use this on print on demand, but you don't want this raggedy bottom here. You can double click on it, go like this. And now it's easier to put text down here, right? You can add text to your designs just straight like this, where before you'd have to like kind of cover it or do this wavy thing. Um, but having this crop works great. And you can crop it, like I said, any four of the ways 
um, just grab the corners or whatever and crop it, right? Uh, and this works for um, designs or images that you take the background out of. So let's say I went back here and we go and let's say, um, I don't know, we want this cup, right? And we can do the background remover on it. It's going to know that I only want the cup in the saucer, I think. Let's see. Yeah, so only the cup in the saucer. And I can still crop that too. So if I wanted to crop that out, right, and just bring it in, I can do that. And then I can size it up, right? But it doesn't work for these objects. So if you double click on it, um, you can't do that. So right now, uh, it only works on images, which I think is still fine. It's really good for that. It would be nice if you could crop these as well. I'm sure they're working on it, but right now it just works on that. So really cool cropping tool can be used in multiple variety of ways. And I think it will be really good for print on demand. Like I said, uh, if you need that straight edge or just going to crop in something. So feature number three that I want to share with you is called drop shadow. So it works on everything, including text. I'll show you that later, but you can see object shadow. You can add a drop shadow and you can do it offset. You can do the angle different. You can blur it out more. It just gives that nice drop shadow. Check that out, right? Um, and you can do it on this one too. So even if you cut it, it, it will know that the drop shadow goes there. So let me do offset so you can see it. There it is and blur. And you can change the color of the drop shadow. It doesn't have to be black. It can be whatever color you want. So if you wanted to make it even the color of this right here, right? Um, blur it out, change the angle. It really matches, kind of gives that, that depth that you need on some of these. Uh, and it would work on objects as well. So if I wanted to do a drop shadow on this, make it glow, for example, I can do that, have this glowing feature, um, blur it out. Maybe I want it um, that yellow or maybe that light blue here and I can offset it. Oops, not that far, maybe right in the middle, but we want to blur it out, right? And said so that's really cool. And uh, it works on that one too, but I'm going to show you text. So we can already do it with text, right? So it's already in the text effect. So this is that same thing that we've done. Uh, it's not in the same spot, but if we do text effects right here, these are the same kinds of things, offset, angle, blur, for example, um, and change the color. Some of these have it. Um, this one right here is the drop shadow. So maybe they'll be adding, you know, line shadow and all this stuff later, but you can do it like that. And you can also do it with, uh, the stroke of something. So if you have, um, let's say an element and we have this basic shape and we want just the border of it, you know, like that. And let's take out this and we just have a border. You can see it right there. Uh, it also works on the border. So let's click on that uh, shadow. So if we want it to glow like that, it can. So you can see that glow. So drop shadow, pretty cool. Works on everything. Uh, it used to work uh, only on text, but now it works on objects as well as images and even uh, line objects to the, the border. So have fun with this one. I think it can really add some dimension uh, to your designs, uh, especially if you're doing like posters and things like that, I think would be really cool. So feature number four, speaking of posters, this will do really well on posters. I think it's really cool. They've added another thing on here. So we already had um, background or textures, right? And so the new thing is called background. So textures, we know uh, if we had this, we add a texture to it. Um, you can't see it because it's white. Let me do a let me do a background so you can see. So we have that texture, right? We can add any of these textures. Really cool. Uh, the new thing next to textures now you can see is backgrounds. So let me get rid of this texture. I'll delete. Uh, get rid of this background color because it doesn't matter. And we can do poster size with any of these backgrounds. So look at that. It fills the background. Check out this. This would be a great start to a poster. You can look at this abstract. Like they've added so many things and then you can add things to it. It already has a colored background. So instead of having just a regular white background or colored background, now you have these cool backgrounds. And look at that. All of these come included 
with it. I'm gonna go back. They've added a ton of them. My favorite is that watercolor, but you got some sparks. You got some abstract tiles, that's so cool. Uh, you got paint. Uh, the watercolor again, really cool, right? This itself could be a poster, but I would add more things to it uh, just to make it different. Holographic, like it, it keeps going. Marble, uh, glitter, they added all these things. Look at this, this would be great for a mock-up if you have a t-shirt right here. Um, look at all these mock-up stuff, that would be cool, right? This would make a great Pinterest post too, if you're doing um, Pinterest or you're doing uh, Instagram, you could put some text right here. It'd be great. You can do a whole line of um, quotes and stuff. If you, I mean, uh, let's see. Just getting really excited about this alcohol ink. Like, go through this. I like. I don't have time to show all of them, but um, I think these are really cool uh, for posts. If you're doing uh, Instagram posts, Facebook posts, or anything like that, making cards. I mean, great. And then of course these as well. So. Just a whole, just lots and lots of backgrounds that can really help. Um, and you can see them all. Like these colored ones are cool too. So if you're looking for that kind of stuff, it'd be really great. So uh, have fun with backgrounds. I think there will be a great start to posters. You already saw, we showed the presets for a displate. I think this would be great for displate uh, and just get you started right away and having something on the screen and then you can kind of add to it. So posters or backgrounds um, for posters is my number four feature and I think it's gonna be great. So feature number five I wanted to show you is related to textures and backgrounds, but let me show you again on backgrounds. I totally forgot this, I jumped ahead. You can also do brightness and contrast and all of these on your background. So check this out. So not only do they have like the backgrounds already, but you can play around with the brightness and contrast and and saturation and things like that. So um, you can also, I believe, add some color. No, that doesn't work, but uh, yeah. Or, or remove color, wow. So play around with that as well. Uh, let's see what this show all, oh wow, even more stuff on here. So you can really do some like Photoshop kind of things on here um, with it. So uh, adding noise and pixelate. Oh, that's really cool. So lots of stuff you can do with the backgrounds. Have fun with it. Um, new feature for me, you may have seen it before, but I think it is super powerful. So number five, uh, let's do textures here. Let's remove this background. Um, just delete that. I'm gonna um, make this here. So one of the things that I saw in textures is this cool thing right here. It's called the alpha mass selection. Let me show you what it does. I'm gonna pick an element here, and you can pick any element, but I think it works best on this one. I'm just gonna do a uh, US flag. All right, you see this one, it has a texture, but you could like put textures on any one of these. So let's say this one doesn't have a texture, right? And let's go back and go to textures here and do this alpha mass selection. So let's take a look at it. There's a ton of them, right? So if you want to add some roughness to this, you could do the full thing, but you could also add just this right here. So here's, I'm gonna do the alpha mask here, and I'm gonna um, clip the content, and you can see it just clips it out and just makes that thing rough right here. So it's not the full thing, it's kind of adding to it. So there's lots of different ways you can add roughness to it. You can add um, fence on here, barbed wire, um, and then uh, let's see, other barbed wire, drips. So pretty cool stuff on here. Um, geometric patterns, right? And it's splatter, that kind of splatter stuff. Um, drips again, let's see, right? So you can add some of these things to it right there. So I think this is a fun one uh, to play around with, especially um, if you want even more um, distressed textures on it, I think this would be great. So it kind of distressed the edges instead of just the inside on some of these. Uh, whereas before, if we went back, um, we had only these grunge textures to kind of do the whole thing. I think this one's just a little bit different. You can see the, the difference here. So this is kind of the grunge texture where it's overall. And even when we had, you know, some of these that didn't 
have that much grunge. I think this one's different if you go back and you can see kind of more of this kind of full grunge thing, right? So have fun with this. Lots of alpha mass selections here. I think it can add a lot of great textures and feelings to some of your designs. After you create it, kind of do the edges, the distressed edges, it would be great. So have fun with this one. Those are all my five there. Um, I'll put a, in the comments uh, all five listed out and kind of the timestamp so you can try it out. Um, hopefully, let me know which one of these is, is the best for you. If you've seen it or if you played with these, I think it would be great uh, to hear in the comments. So there you go, really quickly, those five new features that I found on Kittle. Like I said, they're constantly adding more and more stuff on there. It's great. Uh, you can actually request, I, I've said this in my last video, you can actually request how to do that. I'll, I'll put a link in the description where you can request different features that you want to see on Kittle and they're very um, responsive. They, they have a list of things that they're working on and a list of things that they've done and a list of things that they're going to work on later. So it's really great. Uh, if you haven't seen my last video where I show you what kinds of things Kittle is really strong in, I'll put that video right here so you can watch that right now and you can see, uh, kind of give an overview of Kittle. And I have a lot of other Kittle videos as well. If you're interested in Kittle, want to learn more about that. Thanks again for watching. And as always, guys, keep creating and keep learning. I'll see you on the next one.